All right. How is everyone? Good? How are you? Doing great. What's on your mind? What's on my mind? I got practice tape to watch. That's what's on my mind, right? Um, obviously, one of the greatest rivalries in football, the backyard brawl. Uh, it's great to be part of it again. Frank, uh, with West Virginia's defense, um, you know, they're challenging up front, obviously, but what do you think is going to be the biggest key for you guys to go out there? succeed this weekend? Well, I think when you look at every football game, you look at the keys to success. And really, it's protecting the football. It's minimizing your mistakes, whether it's self-inflicted penalties, um, you know, playing a clean game, minimizing mental errors, minimizing negative plays, whether they're runs or sacks, minimizing drops. So if we can go in there and play clean and minimize things that lose games, your chances increase of victory. Frank, your memories of this brawl are not one-sided. What are some of the things, some of the thoughts that come to your mind when you think about playing West Virginia? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And uh, as I think about that answer, I'll kind of step away as the coach, but the person that's been involved. You know, as a kid growing up in Morgantown, it was awesome. You know, my father became the head coach at West Virginia. My brother played at WVU. Um, have great memories of Mountaineer football and living in Morgantown. Obviously, my father is from Western PA. I was born in Pittsburgh. We've been on both sides of this rivalry. I'm not sure how many years. It might be up to 30 at this point. Um, but what a great rivalry to be a part of, you know, as, as a Pitt Panther and a Mountaineer. Um, it's a privilege to be part of it. Great memories, whether it's going back to 1975, when Bill McKenzie kicked the game-winning field goal at the end of the game for West Virginia to beat Pitt, and then great memories, you know, watching my brother coach at Pitt uh, and having victories. It's just, once again, great to be a part of. Are you, are you in charge of teaching these kids? Because these guys were in elementary school the last time these, in the, these two schools played. Are you in charge of, like, trying to – Give them a historical context of kind of what this means instead of just that's No, you know what? Well, we're focusing on football. Um, it's going to be a great game Thursday night. It's going to be a great environment. Uh, you know, we're focusing on ourselves. We're focusing on things that win and lose games. Um, but we're going to have a lot of fun out there, that's for sure. What's going on in the Signetti household, given that you have so many people on either side of, of this rivalry? <laughs> this game has always been special. You know, for anyone that's in Western PA or West Virginia, not just the Signetti's, but uh, yeah, this is the one game, man. When you come back to Coach a Pitt and you see that you open up with West Virginia Thursday night, there's, it's going to be special. Keith, your starting quarterback, what was he able to do to separate himself from Nick this summer? You know, they both were great. So proud of both of them. I think the biggest thing might be the accuracy you know, the game experience. Uh, Nick had a great camp. Um, you know, I feel really confident in both of them that uh, we can go, we can achieve our goals with both if needed. Considering, considering all your family ties, who is the Signetti family you rooting for? Hey, we're Pitt Panther fans. Let's, let's make no mistake. Um, you know, our family heritage is from Western Pennsylvania. We had a little stop in Morgantown that didn't end very well. And make no mistake, man, we, we are Pitt Panthers. Frank, uh, I know that you weren't here last year, but last year you guys turned all your, all your offensive linemen. And this year, the same offensive linemen that worked stars last year kept their spots. Were there any places where guys made some really tough decisions about some like, big guys that could have you know, stepped in and become stars this year? Yeah, you know, not just with the offensive line, but we have depth. You know, Coach Narduzzi has built a tremendous football program here. There's a great culture. There's a great roster. We have depth. Um, Coach Borbley and AO have done an unbelievable job training the offensive line. And, you know, when we go out on the practice field, you can't always tell whether it's the first line or the second line. Usually, most places you're at, there's a pretty big drop-off, you know, uh, we got outstanding depth at the offensive line and the other positions. Well, speaking of the positions, the past couple of years that I've covered this team, there's usually been an or next to the starter at the running back position. There's not one this year. The only or was next to between Vincent Davis and uh, and Sebo. What did Izzy do to separate himself from everyone else? Or and 
what is the what do you look for in this running back rotation? Like who's gonna is he gonna take the lead? Well, first off, we're so blessed because when you look at it, we got five runners in that room. You know, uh, they're outstanding. They compete with each other. They have good vision. They have good balance, body control, short area burst. Um, if one thing probably separated Izzy, it might be the decisiveness and the flat out speed where he can hit home runs. Uh, but once again, whether it's Rodney, whether it's Vince, whether it's Sebo or Daniel, we have confidence all in the whole group. How much do you think Keaton's experience coming in, you know, I see sort of played into, helped him sort of quick, quickly kind of get up to speed? Well, experience is so important. You know, how do you get better playing quarterback by playing? So, you know, Keaton is, he has game experience from USC, certainly helps. Um, and, you know, Keaton's a football player, man. He's smart. He sees the game well. He's a natural passer. Uh, he's got a great delivery. So, you know, he's a blessed young man that uh, has done an unbelievable job. Do you think, you talked about game experience. Do you think the fact that he's played in big rivalries at his past college, do you think that gives him a huge advantage here in this one? Well, experience matters. Oh, yeah. You know, it really does. Um, but I'm sure every player that walks out on that field Thursday night, man, is going to be excited. And his experience will, will certainly help him. Right. Two more for Coach? Are you going to be upstairs right. or down on the field and why? I like being upstairs. I like being in a, uh, an environment where you don't let the emotions of the game uh, get involved in your play calling. Obviously, when you're sitting up top, you've got an unbelievable view of what's going on from an offense and defensive perspective. Uh, just from an organizational standpoint, um, you can organize your call sheets, your situational sheets, and the guys that are in the box with you, you have really, really clean, clear communication because it's a great environment up there. Well, then, Amanda, go ahead. Uh, uh, how much do you think Keaton's uh, off-season work in the summer with the receivers Helped him, like put him ahead maybe uh, even entering fall camp. He talked about how much he was throwing with the receivers all summer and said when he came in, he felt like he already had the timing and was already in sync with those guys. Yeah, you know, I, th I think Nick and Keaton both worked very hard. And when you, when you teach the passing game, it's about timing and rhythm. You know, everything goes through the quarterback's footwork. Uh, the more you work with those guys, the more trust that you develop. You know, it's that you-me factor. Um, so the work that Keaton and Nick both put in through, the, through really the spring, the summer, and training camp has been invaluable for them to play fast and decisive. Jeff, go ahead, last one. Frank, what, what did Means and Mumfield do to come in as transfers to be able to, to start right away? Well, first off, they're both very talented. You know, like Keaton, they have experience. You know, they've both had success at the college level already. They got a tremendous coach in Coach Underwood that, that uh, has played in the National Football League. He's a tremendous teacher. Uh, he builds trusting relationships. They have bought into the fundamentals and techniques that we are teaching. And I mean, they're both great kids. That entire room is such a great group where they work with each other, compete with each other. Um, you know, once again, guys that have experience, it helps.